They were people of high position and were amongst the highest of society. And periodically a good king came along and cleaned up. But then they always came back into power. This is nature worship. This is pan worship. This is Luciferian worship. And the presidents of the world are members. Let's look at the Bohemian Grove video. There's the paper now best all is in his leafy temple, and all within the grove be reverent before him. Lift up your heads, O ye trees, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting choirs. For behold, here is Bohemian shrine, and holy are the pillars of this house. There's the owl. For beauty is eternal. And we bow to beauty, everlasting. For lasting happiness, we turn to one alone. And she surrounds you now. Great nature, refuge of the weary heart. We bow to one alone. Great nature. She is ever faithful. Other friends may fail. So must she come as children. Little children that believe or ever doubt her beauty and her faith. Bohemians and priests, our funeral fire awaits the corpse of care. Prince and all mortal wisdom. Owl of Bohemia, we beseech thee, grant us thy counsel. Owl of Bohemia, grant us thy counsel. That's just a part of the ritual which shows that it is nature worship. It is condemned in the Bible and yet who are the members? Let's continue. This is an article in Mother Jones, August 18, 1981, volume 6, page 28, and reports who the prominent members were. For example, George P. Schultz, Stephen Betchell, uh, Gerald Ford, Henry Kissinger, William Buckley, can you imagine them all walking around naked, worshipping a stupid owl? I mean, that's so pathetic. Fred Hartley, Griffin, Haywood, Coors, Teller, Ronald Reagan, Clausen, George Bush, William French, Smith, etc., etc., etc. It is pathetic. Modus operandi of the order. The activities of the order are directed towards changing our society, changing the world, to bring about a new world order. This will be a planned order with heavily restricted individual freedom. That's fascism. And I will show you the papal encyclicals that will make your hair stand on edge as to what is going to happen all over the world. And believe me, I live in a country where it's being implemented. And you can see it happening every single day. It is scary. But you don't have to be afraid. If you know why it's happening, if you do not know why it is happening, you will despair and there are thousands who are putting bullets through their head because they cannot tolerate it. 4,000 farmers driven off the land and murdered in my country alone. They lose everything. They lose hope. They put bullets through their heads. They wipe out their entire families because it's better for them to die than to live with it. And you know what? You give a lecture like this and you show what's behind it and why it's behind it and guess what? They get hope. Because they see it's not just them and not something they don't understand. Once they start understanding the bigger picture, they gain hope. And they say, wow, so it's not really the end for us because this is simply the sign that Jesus is coming soon. And there will be a better kingdom. Let us give our lives to Jesus Christ because this world has nothing to offer. And they get hope. So far than being negative, they conceive a lecture like this, for example, as positive. And it has an amazing effect on countries where this is being implemented this very day. 
No constitutional protection if you go against it. They control education. I'll show you how in the lectures. Money, law, politics, economy, history, psychology, philanthropy, medicine, religion, media. There is nothing that they do not control. And remember, they are neither left nor are they right. So if there are right-wing parties and left-wing parties, they control them what? Both. That's the Hegelian principle. That's Hegelian logic. Remember that both Marx and Hitler, the extremes of left and right, presented a textbook enemies, evolved out of the same philosophical system, Hegelianism. I'm quoting from one of the greatest researchers in this field that brings screams of intellectual anguish from Marxists and Nazis. Remember that the, not, that the, the uh, Jesuits were told that they must serve on this side and the other side. Remember that? And create conflict between the sides. This conflict of opposites is essential to bring about the change that they want. Today this process can be identified in the literature of the Trilateral Commission, for example, where change is promoted under conflict management. Have you heard that name before? Right, conflict is essential. The state is absolute. So the state must have total control. That means the people must relinquish their rights to the state. Do you see that happening in the United States at the moment? Absolutely. So, the state requires complete ob obedience. An individual does not exist for himself in these so-called organic systems, but only to perform a role in the operation of the state. That's exactly what it was like under Nazism. Here's Hegel. The two, Hegel and Kant, are the philosophers behind the system. I was stunned. I was in Europe four weeks ago, in Germany, and the leaders, the presidents of Germany, went down and put down wreaths in front of these people's graves and said, their philosophy has made the new Europe possible. They honored them. What a terrible, I would almost say satanic, well, why not just say it, philosophy. The Illuminati principle that the end justifies the means is also the principle of the group and the order, which is skull and bones. That means you can do anything, no matter how dastardly, as long as you achieve your aim. There's an outer circle, an inner circle, an inner core, all of these. Council of Foreign Relations is the outer circle, Trilateral Commission, all of those. Uh, Trilateral Commission was founded by David Rockefeller, comprises 200 members worldwide. The Bundy operation, uh, activism towards a new world global order. George W. Bush, who was a member of Skull and Bones, remember, says it is a big idea, a new world order where diverse nations are drawn together in a common cause. Only the United States has both the moral standing and the means to back it up. So, do you think they're trying to get all the countries of the world to come into this system, yes or no? Do you think it's possible? that they are giving their power to a woman who rides them? Does it look like it? Who controls them? The Jesuits. And who do the Jesuits say all power must be under? The Pope. Isn't that correct? All right. So who do you think would clamor for a new world order more than anyone else? Maybe the Pope. Wouldn't that be interesting? Well, here he is, New International Order Urged for the Sake of Peace, when? January 3, 2004. His whole New Year's speech was dedicated to asking for the implementation of the New World Order. The Vatican City, January 1, 2004. John Paul II started the New Year by insisting that peace is possible and thus a duty, and he called for a new international order. CNN, what did that have to say? Pope calls for a new world order. Thursday, January 1, 2004. Vatican City, Pope John Paul rang in the new year on Thursday with a renewed call for peace in the Middle East and Africa and the creation of a new world order. 
based on respect for the dignity of man and equality amongst nations. What did he say? This year, Pope John Paul directed his thoughts to the continuing conflict around the globe, but he stressed that to bring about peace, there needs to be a new respect for international law and the creation of a new international order based on the goals of the United Nations. He called for an order that is able to give adequate solutions to today's problems based on the dignity of the human being, this is human rights, on an integral development of society, on solidarity amongst nations, rich and poor, on the sharing of resources and the extraordinary results of scientific and technical